Hello, I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro, and today we're going to be talking about the management of breast cancer patients with hot flashes. And with me is Dr. Andy Kaunitz. Welcome, Andy. You are at the University of Florida. You are a Research Foundation Professor, Associate Chair in the Department of OB-GYN, University of Florida College of Medicine in Jacksonville. So let's start off with why is this such a difficult topic for breast cancer patients, survivors with hot flashes? Um, hot flashes is a, a real conundrum um, for women with breast cancer um, for three reasons. First of all, Marla, um, chemotherapy in younger uh, breast cancer patients will often induce menopause. And as we know, uh, the worst uh, vasomotor symptoms um, uh, are those that occur with induced menopause in younger menopausal women. Second, the um, um, adjuvant agents, specifically tamoxifen and aromatase inhibitors, themselves increase hot flashes. Um, and then finally, um, we don't know that use of hormone therapy is safe in breast cancer survivors. Uh, we know that breast cancer is hor a hormone sensitive um, um, uh, type of malignancy and regulatory authorities, whether it be in the US, Canada or elsewhere, um, uh, consider hormone therapy contraindicated in this group of patients. So many of these patients will come to their clinicians having tried many over-the-counter preparations. Indeed. So a word on efficacy as well as safety. I, as I tell my patients, I wish black cohosh, I wish uh, soy, red clover, isoflavones were more effective than placebo. But in the last decade, we've seen a number of well-done clinical trials demonstrating that these agents are not more effective than placebo. Wish they were. And in fact, we lack the safety data. Right, I mean, some, some of these agents may act, particularly isoflavones, may have serum-like qualities, and you're right, we don't, we don't know about as much as we'd like about the safety um, of, for instance, isoflavones in this patient population. So what is available for our patients for non-hormonal management of these hot flashes? Well, uh, well, that brings us to the good news part of this story. So we, we have much more um, good quality clinical trial uh, information supporting use uh, of SSRIs, uh, specifically paroxetine or Paxil, um, uh, and SNRIs with the, the best data uh, being from venlafaxine or Effexor. And these agents are more clearly more effective than placebo. They're not as effective as um, standard dose hormone therapy in treating hot flashes, but they are more effective than placebo, and they, they offer some welcome options for clinicians and women uh, with symptoms, uh, women who've had breast cancer. So in some countries, uh, in the United States, this is on-label. Many other countries, it's off-label. That's right. And um, um, Brisdale, which is the 7.5 milligram uh, formulation of paroxetine mesylate, uh, is the first, and, and in the U.S., the only um, formulation, specifically non-hormone formulation, specifically approved to treat hot flashes. And in terms of side effects for these medications? Um, uh, they have a very um, benign side effect profile. There may be some, for instance, dizziness, headaches, um, slightly more common um, in women who received active treatment versus placebo. Um, uh, of note, uh, with the low-dose paroxetine formulation, no sexual side effects at all, unlike uh, with higher-dose SSRI treatment. So these, um, these, this is a very easy-to-prescribe treatment. There's no um, um, escalation of dose required at initiation. And should women discontinue therapy, there's no need to taper down. It's just um, 7.5 for all women at all times during therapy. Easy to prescribe. And as always, we worry about drug interactions. For specifically for a woman who's on oh. tamoxifen and the cytochrome P450 pathway, what might well, that I'm mean? Well, I'm glad you asked because um, that. Um, so if women are using um, tamoxifen, um, the use of SSRIs and specifically paroxetine can reduce the efficacy and reduce active. Um, 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 blood levels uh, for tamoxifen. Um, and um, so if your patient's on tamoxifen, don't use paroxetine. The good news is you can use venlafaxine. Uh, that, that interaction is not a problem there. Terrific. Thank you so much, Andy. I'm sure this will be most helpful for our clinicians. Thank you, Marla.